now see why the cathode ray tube is such an important part of radar equipment. First, let us get an idea of how radar works. The word means radio, detection, and range. And the basic principle is that radio waves which strike any object are reflected back as an echo to a greater or smaller extent, rather like light and sound. They have the advantage that practical ranges are greater, they are invisible, inaudible, and can penetrate fog and cloud. If a man stands some distance from a large wall and claps his hand, after a short while he will hear the echo. Let's time it with a stopwatch. Just one second. Since sound travels at 1100 feet per second, the wall must be 550 feet away, since the total journey must have been 1100 feet. But if the target were an aeroplane five miles away, we would use radio waves. We use a radio transmitter designed to send out a very short pulse of radio waves at frequent intervals. The echo from an aircraft five miles away would come back in about one twenty thousandth of a second. Obviously, we need to make use of a cathode ray tube, since a stopwatch would be useless in the case of such a short interval of time. It's all arranged like this. Here is the transmitter, here the target, not the scale of course. Here the receiver with directional aerials and the cathode ray tube. We'll watch in slow motion. The pulse of signal is sent out from the transmitter and at the same time triggers, that is starts, the time base. It also applies a fleeting voltage to the wire plates of the cathode ray tube, causing a momentary deflection of the spot and such a deflection is usually called a blip. The returning echo after suitable treatment in the receiver is arranged to cause another blip which, due to the time interval between the transmitted and received pulse, occurs further along the trace. Actually, all this is repeated hundreds of times per second so that we get a continuous trace like this. The time base is calibrated for range and as the receiver aerial is directional, we get the biggest echo blip when the aerial is pointing directly at the target. The speed of the time base is varied according to the range to be covered, fast for short range and slow for long range. But how do we know the speed of the spot? How do we calibrate it? Suppose we arrange to deflect the spot vertically by means of a voltage from an oscillator tuned to 93,000 cycles per second. The velocity of radio waves is 186,000 miles per second and therefore the one ninety-three thousandth of a second interval between the peaks will represent two miles in distance covered by the radio waves, or since the waves travel to the target and back again, one mile in range of target. From this trace, we can mark in the range scale, and at any later time we can use it to readjust the spot speed to match up with the scale. Of course, there is no reason why we shouldn't make the time base and range scale vertical if we wish. Where the target is a great distance from the radar set, it is often convenient to be able to inspect part of the time base more closely. We can get an enlarged picture of it on a second tube. To do this, the usual method is to arrange a circuit which increases the brilliance of part of the trace, forming a bright spot known as a strobe. The strobe can be moved to any desired position on the trace, and the circuit is so designed that this bright part is shown enlarged on a second cathode ray tube. In radar, this helps in accuracy of ranging and enables a closer study of the echo to be made. However, it is not essential to use an additional tube for the selected portion of the trace. The cathode ray is so accommodating that it can produce both traces apparently together. In this case, the two are traced alternately by the same spot, but the speed of repetition is so great that they both seem continuous. If it is desired to use a long time base without using a very large tube, the sweep 
frequency may be doubled and an additional constant deflecting voltage applied to the Y trace for every second sweep, so that the second half of the trace appears below the first. In other words, the lower trace is simply a continuation of the upper one. A very different type of time base is in the form of a radial line, which is traced by the spot from the center of the tube face to the circumference. By suitable deflector arrangements, we can make the time base rotate about the center of the tube. And instead of applying incoming signals to produce a blip, we make them reduce the negative voltage of the grid. The brilliance of the electron beam is increased, and the signal produces a bright spot on the time base. Using this type of radial time base rotated at the same speed as the directional aerials of a radar set, the bright spots due to echoes from targets will give their planned position to a certain scale, and we may actually mark the tube face with grid coordinates and topographical features like a map. It is called the Plan Position Indicator, or PPI. With the normal fluorescent screen coating, the spots only show at the instant of reception, so that we use a coating with a long afterglow. In this way, the responses remain for several seconds, giving a picture of the targets in the areas concerned. have seen some of the more common forms of cathode ray tube display used in radar. But what are the controls? Most of the essential ones can be found on the normal cathode ray oscillograph as used by the radar mechanic. The brilliance of the spot, for example. is controlled by varying the voltage on the grid. Focusing. There are two methods. Electrostatic focusing is achieved by varying the voltage on the middle anode and electromagnetic by varying the current through the focusing coil. There are also two knobs for positioning the trace. The X shift moves it horizontally and the Y shift vertically. Using the electrostatic shift system, the voltages on the deflector plates are varied. electromagnetic system, shift currents are introduced into the deflector coil. As we saw, adjustment of the spot velocity is obtained by varying the resistance through which the time-based condenser is charged. In this instrument, the velocity control comprises a knob for switching in various condensers or course control and a variable resistance for fine control. Finally, the sink control. This triggers the time base at the same frequency as the waveform being examined. These controls are simple to operate and form one of the advantages of the cathode ray tube. However, its wide application will be assured above all by its versatility. This versatility is a result of the freedom of movement of the electron beam, coupled with the cathode ray tube's ability, when used in conjunction with the time base, to present electrical impulses pictorially.